First up in our final panel is the founder and CEO of Carvana. Say hi to Ernie Garcia. Next up, she is both a distinguished finance professional and quite an influential figure in the world of pickleball. Say hi to Caitlin Kerr, won't you? And then my man, he is a reality TV superstar and a pickleball lifestyle pioneer influencer. Those are some very impressive words to put together. My man, Tyson Apostle. So we're going to have a lot of fun with these three up here. And, you know, Ernie, I'm going to start here with you. Uh, it isn't the PPA tour anymore. It's the Carvana PPA tour. How did that come to be? What role did you play in it? And where is this going from here? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you the role that I played. Um, I am absolutely obsessed with pickleball. I hope... <laughs> My partner's right here filming me on his iPhone. we got to stop that right now. That's not going to work. That's like we lost today, and we lost because of him. Cooper Fratt, please raise your hand. Wow. Yeah, we did. Wow. We lost because we we of Cooper we're Fratt. We're calling people out right yeah, here. I know the dinks were high, and I was in trouble out of the blocks. If you're going to film me, if you're going to film me, that's how this is going to go. But so, uh, so I, I think uh, I love pickleball. For me, you know, in my life, I've got Carvana. I've got, I've got uh, three kids, so I've got my family. And then it's pickleball. That, that's basically all I have in sleep. Those are the four parts of my life. And uh, I, I think what's happened in pickleball over the last four or five years is absolutely amazing. I think it plays a huge role in so many people's lives. It's, it's you know, it, there's a million people out there just like me where it's the thing they do if it's not family or work. And so I think at Carvana, we want to be part of that. I think um, you know, we sell cars, and so we're, we're trying to hawk our merchandise on everyone, and we're trying to get in front of as many people as we can. And there's a lot of people who love this sport, so we want to jump on board. Yeah, and you have jumped in in a big way, and we're going to hear about how that has progressed and evolved over, over the year. Caitlin Kerr, you're a finance person. How in the world did you find pickleball? Yeah, so basically I played soccer at Duke. I've had like six knee surgeries, one ankle surgery. So graduated early to play professional soccer. Uh, and then because of my knee surgeries, I have a hole in my femur, couldn't play. So I went to work on Wall Street for four years at Bank of America selling high yield credit, then took a job at JP Morgan as a financial advisor for ultra high net worth individuals. And uh, in March of 2021, I moved to a beach town and saw a lot of people playing pickleball, played it for the first time, and I immediately thought this is gonna, this is gonna change the world. Like that's the vibe. I, I didn't just play soccer growing up, played all sports. And just the ability for it to be so social, but for me to be able to play a sport where I can get my competitive fire out um, was just incredible. So I uh, found pickleball, then started playing some tournaments, met the founder of Major League Pickleball, and then created an ownership group. We bought the Las Vegas Night Owls, which was incredible. And uh, yeah, it's just been a, a great ride since. But I truly think it has the ability to change people's lives, and that's why through Pickleball Chick, I just want to spread the joy of the sport with as many people as possible. Yeah, we're going to hear more about how she became the Pickleball Chick, which is uh, her handle here. I'm going to talk to a dude, though, first at the end. So Tyson Apostle, everyone knows you from Survivor. So how do we connect the dots to, to Pickleball here, and how have you uniquely sort of led the charge for all these content creators? and inf I, You are... You gave me that word pioneer, and I couldn't agree more with how you have advanced that part of the marketing of the sport. How did that get going? So I was on season 40 of Survivor. It was my fourth time on, all winter season. And generally, as you come off a season, it's airing on TV. You call your agency, and you're like, line a bunch of public speaking engagements up for me and tell people forget who I am. That lasts like 12 months. And then that's how you, that's how you do it. But... COVID happened, and I had been playing this game, Pickleball, in Arizona. I moved to Arizona a few years before that, and I called uh, my agent, and I said, I've been playing a lot of Pickleball. I love it. Anybody who plays it is going to love it. It fits my personality. I'm quirky. I'm fun. I'm a little outside the box. Uh, I want to be the Pickleball guy, and I need your help to do it. He said, you're joking, right? We're not going to do that. 
So I said, okay, I'll go somewhere else. So I went to a sports agent that had transitioned into the entertainment industry. And I said, there's nobody playing pickleball right now. I can be the guy in pickleball. I'll be the first, then I'll be remembered as the guy in pickleball. They said, that's the dumbest joke I've ever heard. I'm not helping you. So then I called my third guy, and he was like, I'm not doing anything. It's COVID. I'm all in. We got a meeting with Gamma. They said, we love it. We've never heard it. We want to do it. We'll give you exactly what you want. I've been with them going on four years now. Fila Pickleball 3, um, Chubbies over a year now, Imperial Hats, and we are not professionals up here. I'm not a professional. Don't look at me like I'm a professional pickleball player. I am the lifestyle side. I showcase how much fun it is to have pickleball be a part of your active lifestyle and how much fun it is to encourage others to play. And I am an ambassador of the sport, and I help these companies reach first-time players. Yeah, Love it. Love it. And, you know, just the, the fact that multiple doors had to be kicked in on this, too. After the second one, I was like, I have to do this, even at a loss. Even if I am yeah. paying myself <laughs> and people don't know it, I'm doing this just yeah. to prove them wrong. Oh, you have proved them wrong in a big <laughs> way here, and it's uh, it's awesome to hear your story. So Ernie Carvana has 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 jumped in. There's something to be said for putting your name on something. How do you make sure that Carvana is getting the benefit of the attraction to the sport that so many people have? And what is your team constantly thinking about to make sure you take advantage of everything that pickleball has to offer? Well, I, I think right now we're on the ride like everyone else. I mean, it's just going up so fast. It's incredible. And I think um, the way that we like to think about marketing, this is maybe like going to be a little bit boring, but I think whenever you're marketing people, people generally don't care about a brand, right? They care about what they care about. And so I think there's the reason there's a lot of celebrities in, uh, in a lot of ads is because you're trying to just grab a customer's attention for a brief second so you can then send your message and try to brand it at the end. And I think what's so great is Pickleball has so many people's attention. So I think just putting you know, Carvana at the front for us was like a complete no-brainer. I think we're extremely excited about it. When we started this, you know, Pickleball was at a way smaller place. I, I used to you know, pull up the YouTube feeds and you'd see you know, 300 people watching a match and then it turned into 500 and then it was 1,000. And I mean, now it's on you know, Tennis Channel and there's 10,000 people watching Court 2. And it's just grown so much over the last couple of years. So I think this has been great for us. And, and I think you know, we just want to be associated with it because so many people have so much passion. They, they certainly do, and I think, Caitlin, you have uh, sort of pushed in on that. You're, you're a passionate person yourself. You talked about how you formulated a, a Major League Pickleball ownership group. Talk to us about that. You have some very interesting people within, within that, and how have you taken that to push the sport forward? Uh, because I think it's interesting what you guys have done. Yeah, so I met Steve Kuhn when I was playing at the New York City Open. Steve Kuhn was the founder of Major League Pickleball. And prior to that, for the last year, I had been researching everything possible on pickleball. So when I saw him at the tournament, I was actually speaking to somebody from Pro XR, and I just said, I'm going to go thank Steve for everything he's done for this sport. He's really been a true ambassador. Um, he just wanted to share the joy of the sport with as many people as possible. So went up to him, thanked him. Uh, he had offered me some jobs at Major League Pickleball, but I had built this career in finance that I didn't want to leave at the time. So uh, he offered me, you know, when they were selling more teams, he offered me the opportunity to sell, to, to buy a team. So I said, I think I can put together a, a good ownership group. And it goes back to, for the first time, like, I'm a very open person. I always kind of show who I am. And when, when I created Pickleball Chick, probably like a year prior to that, I was a little nervous because I had this legit finance job and I, you know, you're putting yourself out there on social media, it can be a little weird, um, but Pickleball Chick is really what has gained, my network has just blossomed since Pickleball Chick. So when I was, you know, buying a team, I basically found this hedge fund um, that I went to the Final Four, a basketball tournament with, but all they could talk about was Pickleball Chick because they have pickleball courts at their homes. They have, they're playing pickleball with Tom Brady. They're sending pickleball chick Instagrams to Tom Brady. Um, so that's kind of how it originated. Um, so we called up that hedge fund. 
I'm very close with Kim Kleisters. She's obviously an amazing ambassador for tennis, was a great player, won four majors, um, but she's a great person. And then my best friend, Callie Simpkins, who I played soccer with at Duke. Um, and then we have a few other silent partners. But grabbed this group, got them on some Zoom calls. Uh, they said they wanted to do it because we had been previously looking at other pickleball venture investments on the side, and there was nothing that we all wanted to do together. But when this opportunity arose, we thought we would we would grab it. Um, so that's sort of how the the team was was formed, and it's definitely been a been a ride. Um, Major League Pickleball has gone through a ton of iterations since we we bought the team back in October of 2022. Uh, but I I really believe in the trajectory of the sport, especially at at obviously the grassroots level, but I'm, I'm a huge believer at the pro level as well. I think we're still in its infancy. It's just getting started. Um, you know, more, more and more people are coming out to tournaments. I talked to many of you in the audience today that just came out for this specific forum, which I think is incredible. And um, yeah, I, I, I just really wanted to put together a team that we're all good people first, good people at heart first, and then good investors. So Tyson, obviously, you mentioned the brands that you work with. There are people that have budgets to get to someone like you and budgets to maybe not go there. What have you learned in your sponsorships that have really helped Gamma? How have you helped shape how you do it? Is it them telling you? Is it you telling them? I think that interaction between the two would be really interesting for everybody. So because I've created my own brand off of my personality, for me, it's important to maintain that so I will only work with companies that allow me to do that I offer them like they have input and stuff like that but our goal is to reach first-time players and introduce them to the sport and introduce them to products and there's a lot to be said for brand loyalty so if they are buying a paddle that I have suggested for them and they have a good experience with it their upgraded paddle will hopefully be that next brand and so on and so forth and they'll recommend it to their friends and uh, that's kind of what we've built. So I had those early meetings. Gamma was the first meeting I had. I had another meeting after that. They said, we don't even know what you're talking about. They hunted me down six months later and apologized and said they wish they could have worked with me, but they didn't see the vision at the time. I won't name the brand. Okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll, keep, it, we'll keep that one quiet. But I think that is, and I think, I think a lot of people you have to, we talked at a panel earlier today, you can't dip your toe in, and that means your involvement in the sport, but it also means if you want someone like yourself or Caitlin to represent your brand, you can't take their brand away, or what are, why are we messing around here? And uh, I think, you know, there's probably a lot of brands that are kicking themselves for decisions they've made. Uh, Ernie, on that realm, you've had some interesting commercials and some other things. What has been your thought about either choosing a player or an ambassador or staying away from a air quote spokesperson as it relates to your involvement in pickleball? We've mostly kind of stuck with, with the PPA tours being kind of like our main asset. I think we did, uh, you know, we did something with Anna Lee last year where she was turning 16 and that was basically just like too perfect to miss. Um, so I think that was that was awesome, and she was great. I mean, she's in a very easy person to get behind. Her family's awesome. I can't say enough good things about her. So, um, so I think that was easy. But generally, we've tried to stay kind of more at the at the PPA level, just because um, every once in a while we like to get pitied by the pros, and they let us into their games. And if you pick one, then all of a sudden you have enemies, and that doesn't work. And we're not going to get you in those games, so that doesn't work. So just your own play just level. Just basically yeah. at the end of the day, just trying to get personal <laughs> games. That was a huge part of it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm brilliant. Sure. That's brilliant. I mean, honestly, brilliant. it should be right at the top of the mission statement. <laughs> Ernie's best games, and then grow Carvana. I mean, that's 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 the way. That's you talk the about the it. order; it's very unclear yeah, at this point. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyson, I think you and I were actually talking about how one gets on Survivor just bef before we started, and I think that message actually would suit a lot of brands and a lot of players looking to develop their brand very well. So can you sort of share, when you turn in your, your tape to get on Survivor and trying to differentiate yourself, what are they looking for? What, it, what, is, what works, what doesn't? And then explain your story of how you got on Survivor too, because I think it's unique to everything you've talked about, about staying on your brand. 
Yeah, so you, uh, I get asked this all the time. They're like, how do you get on the show? What did you do? How many times did you try out? And they're looking for personality, first and foremost. You bring your biggest, brightest personality that is still you. And you have to showcase that. And you also have to be able to tell a story in a brutally honest uh, way where you're showcasing that you are self-aware and are willing to be honest. Like It's not like a job interview. Too many people treat that like a job interview. And I think there's a time and a place for a job interview, and that's a job interview. All the other times you want to leave that at home. Like It's not like, what's your greatest weakness? Oh, that I put my boss's needs before my own. Like, I <laughs> sometimes don't charge for overtime. <laughs> like, that's like, yeah, classic job interview answers. They want to hear, like, I napped through high school, passed by, you know, sharing answers with my friends. Like, that's the type. I got home before the grades got delivered in the mailbox, snatched them out, and then told my parents, I guess they forgot about me. Like, that's the stuff they want to hear. And that's the stuff that, like, is real and honest, and audiences connect with honesty. And so if you can be extra, extra honest, the TMI thing, that is what they are looking for. They want to know what's in the back of your brain that you know you shouldn't say, but you want to. And that's refreshing for people. I mean, within there's bounds to that for sure, but that's very, very refreshing. And if you can do that and master that and make it your own, like I'm not saying go out and be somebody that you're not, be yourself, but be the most yourself you know how to be. And I think a lot of people are constantly trying to shape and be what you think they want you to be, and that is not That's no answer. life to live, Dave. That's no life to live. No, that's, so don't do it. So don't <laughs> do it. So Pickleball Chick, you've actually been on. It hasn't been released yet, and I don't know how much you're allowed to share, but the, it is a fact, so you can share a little bit, a little bit of a pickleball reality show yourself. So... Uh, do share what you can and uh, and wha what we can look for down the road with that. Should I look up Reddit and look at spoilers? <laughs> I don't know if there's spoilers, <laughs> is there? Um, no, but I was I was given a great opportunity. Uh, you know, like Tyson, I feel like you had to submit a video and, and showcase your personality while still being yourself. I obviously am super passionate about the sport. Um, so Pickleball Paddle Battle uh, was hosted by Pickleball Kingdom. They're in the house over there. <laughs> uh, it was an amazing opportunity. They flew out uh, contestants to Chandler, Arizona, which was held at the Pickleball Kingdom. And it was basically a show to host pickleball, like competing, playing the sport, not really any drama. I mean, not too much <laughs> It was an amazing experience. Um, <laughs> the only other there thing I... There was some drama. Okay, yeah. good. There's always drama in pickleball, right? But, um, no, the only experience I've had outside of that was I was on five episodes of Family Feud. So uh, that was really cool to see. You know, obviously Family Feud has been around for decades. It's one of the best TV shows in the world. Um, we did win the car in Fast Money. So... Uh, that was awesome, but to see also just, you know, the Pickleball Kingdom able to do something, build this show from the ground up, and um, I made lifelong friends uh, from the experience, so very grateful. Thanks again, Pickleball Kingdom, for having me. Nice. All right. So, Ernie, we've talked today a lot about collaborating with other brands. Obviously, with your name at the top of the, the PPA, you could be a brand that a lot of people might be interested in, certainly something from my marketing background with Dr. Pepper and Pizza Hut. If we get like brands with similar consumers, we can really drive some marketing. What have you done in that, in that area? What do you wish to do? What could people potentially do with you that would make sense to both brands? How do, how do you look at that and how can, how can you crank that up? I don't know is the answer, but I think, um, I think if there's people in the crowd that have interesting ideas, we'd be open to them. I think, you know, in my mind, I do just think it's so hard to have so many people's attention where they care so much about a thing. And I think pickleball is that thing for a lot of people. And so I think if we can find good ways that fit with our brand and make sense um, and, and feel like they're authentically connecting to like the real community of the sport and you're not kind of just jamming ads down people's throats, I, I think we're all for that. So I don't know what ideas might be out there, but we're open to hear them. 
So there you go. Invite yeah. from the man right here. Uh, Tyson, how important is it for you to be out in the community? Uh, can, can influencers just influence from their studio? I mostly influence, not from my studio, but from my home courts. Uh, I don't come to too many events because I have two kids at home, and that's my priority is to spend maximum amounts of time with them. So I prefer to do that. I think it really is dependent upon you, your personality, your situation. I do a lot of my stuff on Instagram, but I'm also in a unique situation where I get recognized in public as uh, someone who's been on TV enough times. So when I'm in an airport, people stop and get a picture. I have my brands on. That picture goes to their Instagram. That's a way that everything kind of synergizes together. Also, I'm wearing Fila shoes, but also I'm wearing Chubby's top, but also I'm wearing this. Now that gets shared on all of their accounts and everything kind of synergizes on top of itself. So yeah, I, th I think it's really dependent on what you're best at and what you want to do. So you are obviously very, very prescriptive in the clothes that you wear and all of that for players, for others. You, you had the hype squad in here that we're trying to get their, their brand going. There they are. You guys should be up. You guys should be up here behind me yelling. <laughs> yeah. What is going yeah. on? Yeah, Tyson needs his own hype squad. You don't actually, but what do you? What would you tell these people that are, you know, not fabricating but creating that, and, and you know how intentional you are? I think is really, really important. I think it just has to be honest and passionate. Like it's got to be real. Like people can sense that and feel that, and it's the reason that I don't have a social media manager. I do it all myself because if somebody else builds it and it's not built from you and the caption isn't yours, then it's not authentic. Like you can mask that to a certain degree, but like I think find what works for you. One thing that's worked really well for us is longevity and loyalty. Like I won't do a month deals here and another month deal somewhere else with a different brand in a competing space. Like I'm in it for the long haul. I want their name synonymous with me and my name to be synonymous with them so when somebody says feel a pickleball they say oh Tyson's with you and when somebody says Tyson they say oh the feel a pickleball guy and that's what I want and that's what we've created it's taken a few years but we're getting there yeah, and we've talked a lot about today about being in a hurry so I think that's a good message like you gotta you gotta hang with this be patient at the pickle line everybody come on that's now right. come on right. now uh, Ernie how do you get that pickleball vibe throughout your company? Because I think, you know, you talk about the passion, but I think it's important that your employees at least are aware of it or feel it. How do you do that? Well, pickleball does that for you. I think um, we, we put a court in our first office. Um, we had kind of like, you know, over to, we, we were in like a big warehouse kind of set up and over to one side we painted a court and basically like the poor people that had to sit next to that court just heard, you know, <laughs> just heard pickleball all day long. But it's, I mean, you put a court in a spot and, and people hear anyone else playing, everyone in the building will care about pickleball in three months. That it's just what happens because it's just, it's too fun and it's too accessible. And so I think um, what's been cool is just once we got associated with it, I think a ton of people inside the company just got more into it and then it does the work for you and people love it. It really does. Like you don't have to talk 100%. Them in. No, one, no one's, no one's why. It's like, oh, that's, that's great. It's yeah. huge. People love pickleball. Uh, so pickleball chick, where's where's this all heading from from your perspective? You know, we got pickleball boulevard out here. We got a packed house for not one ball's been hit on this stage. We got a packed house, people watching. Where's this going? I think it's just going to infinity and beyond. Um, I Thank always you say Buzz pickleball to the moon. Um, yeah, but I mean, you've seen the trajectory. I've been involved for two years. Um, like Lara Gaynor, I was actually asked to be the host of Katy Perry's uh, Pickleball Charity event. I'm hosting the Necker Island event. Um, so I feel like there's just so many more brands, more charity events. Uh, people are getting involved. I'm on the board of Pickleball Cares, uh, whose mission is to change lives through pickleball. We're doing that through serving um, underserved youth and communities, as well as like we have a slogan, Pickleball for All. So I feel like we're also going to touch the older demographics as well. So I just feel like you know, what Ernie said, the more people that play, the more people that get addicted. You play it, you love it, you experience the social aspect, you can play it competitively, you can play it socially. It's the first time where I can play with, you know, my, my, my parents, 
uh, also my young cousins. Like there's just, there's a, there's a spot in the sport for everybody. And I think the more that the pro game develops stars, um, is also huge because it's tangible. People can see it. People can feel it. I came from the soccer background, um, and you know, look at Me look at what Messi did for you know soccer in the U.S. and in a split second. And um, you know, Ben Johns and Natalie Waters have been great ambassadors of the sport. I think it's going to continue to trickle down to to younger generations. Um, Duper has also done an incredible job getting high schools and getting and getting college students involved. They're having a college national championship. They're having minor league championships, which if you haven't played minor league, you should. You get to play in a team aspect, which is huge. Um, so again, I just, I'm super impressed with how many people came out to the Pickleball Business, Pickleball business Forum. I think like everyone else has mentioned, it's gonna continue to grow. Um, and also I just wanna give a special shout out to Selkirk and Knockaround. He's done a great job of sport, sporting all of his sponsors. Um, but Selkirk and Knockaround have been great sponsors for myself and ambassadors for the sport. So I think um, more people getting involved, the bigger this thing will the, the bigger this thing will get. Tyson, uh, Caitlin just mentioned the youth. Have you been in any of yours uh, requests? How do we get to the twelve year old to the sixteen year old? You got the youngsters at home as a, as a dad. Have you had any involvement there? Do you desire to? Love your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's not that dissimilar to actual reality TV where the demographic is generally an older population and at some point that population is gonna be so old that if there's not the youth, that some there's a stop or a slowdown. And I think a lot of these facilities are doing well to put the junior programs in play. Uh, I know where I play a lot in Mesa, uh, there's a few kids that are young teenagers that are doing their school from the pickleball facility so that they can become professional pickleball players. And I think those kids actually are inspiring. I, I'm 44, like I'm pretty cool for a 44 year old and maybe like somebody in their older 20s still thinks that I got it. But <laughs> these teenagers, like they're different. They need other teenagers to inspire them. And so I think when you see these teenage kids playing that are out there and that have great personalities, they're a perfect fit to get their peers into the sport. I agree, and uh, I think it's it's going to be fun when if I'm broadcasting and I'm talking about the next hot thing, and it's like I'm not saying where they played tennis in college or they brought their team it back in. It's they've been on the twenty by forty four their whole life, and, and that's and that's where it's coming from. So uh, I, it's it's coming, and uh, it's certainly there. Ernie, last call. What uh, what What's next for Carvana with pickleball? What what do you what do you hope to continue to, to, to go there with that? And, and and how can this just keep being a, a win win for the PPA and for and for Carvana? I, I think we're hoping to create a mild obligation for everyone in this room to immediately go out and buy a car. I mean, uh, you have a vend <laughs> you have a vending machine. Again, it's not a big obligation. Did you guys not we're see looking, the fine print when you we're walked in the for door? A mild obligation and, and tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we, we want to. We want to build a big brand. We're like any other company. So I think uh, over time, hopefully we do that. I, I think pickleball can play a huge role in that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just happy to be here. Like we're, we're part of the community. I mean, that's why I'm here. I, I love pickleball so much. It's such a big part of my life. I'm sure that's true for all of you as well. And that's cool. There's not a lot of things. There's not a lot of uh, things you can sponsor and businesses out there that are just a huge part of a person's life that makes them happier and healthier. And I just think pickleball does that. So we're along for the ride. And do tell your friends, do buy a car. Again, we came up here on our own expense. We got to sell a lot of cars, pay for this. So please hurry out. Do, you have, do you have Rivians? <laughs> we might have a couple. Ooh. We might have a couple. Okay, there you go. Yeah, and it's the, the I mean, it's a van. I mean, it's so cool. Exactly. The, the way they get the cars. Come Bring on. your paddles, buy yeah. a car. It makes tons of sense. <laughs> Caitlin, what's next for you? Where's where where's the pickleball chick going? And what what and I and more importantly, how can this group and the, the folks watching at home use your expertise? Because we've talked about it all day long. Like a lot of people see this opportunity, but it's a lot. And if you try to bite off more than you can chew, it, you won't go anywhere with it. Yeah, that's a tough one. But I think 
what has enabled me to make so many connections in the space is just being authentically myself and being super passionate about the sport. I mean, we're all here because we love it, but I truly play <laughs> like Ernie, like Tyson. I play all the time. I go out to the courts. I'm meeting people and just being you, just being you, connecting with brands that you feel you align with, connecting with people you feel like you align with. Um, I'm hosting, I've been hosting Major League Pickleball as the MC and host for the last year, so since October of 2022, so continuing to do that into 2024, um, hosting other pickleball events. Um, I'm also trying to invest in some companies. I'm, a, a lot of companies have reached out for me to be their chief ambassador, um, so dedicated pickleball facilities I've been chatting with, some entertainment concepts, and um, just people that I feel like I connect with on, on, a, on a real level. Um, but in general, I think as pickleball continues to grow, just get out there, network like you have been, and um, keep playing. Because the more people that play, the more people that watch, get your friends to watch. We need the, we need the numbers. The numbers are there. They're growing. But the other thing I wanted to mention is I think pickleball.com has done a tremendous job so far. It still hasn't officially launched. But I think they're really catering to the younger demographic. They're talking, you know, more like TikTok, more, more Instagram. There's younger people on there. Um, when I got involved in the sport, I was just playing with 80-year-olds, and my parents thought I was crazy because I was, you know, I was going out to the courts, and they're like, you're an athlete. Why are you playing? I'm like, they can place the ball well, but the sport is getting younger. And, you know, these, all the brands out there need to cater to that younger demographic uh, because, like I said before, there's going to be, there's going to be colleges that now have this sport. There's going to be scholars. Like, I think it's just, I went to Duke. I played soccer there. I've been talking to a lot of people in athletics at Duke, and I think it's kind of the next big sport to take over the NCAA. No, it's, I couldn't agree more. It's exciting to see where that's going, and I think you mentioned pickleball.com. That is going to be something revolutionary here over the next 30 to 60 days, so definitely keep an eye on that, everybody. Tyson, how are you going to stay involved? Uh, wh wh what can people learn, and if people love what they've heard from you today, are you open to adding, I don't know, socks or something? There's, there's, not, a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of real, real estate, estate over I, here. I'm only looking for a tattoo artist. That's the last thing. Uh, no, I mean, my DMs are open. It's, uh, it has to be a good fit for both of us. Like, I, if we don't both feel pumped on the idea of working together, then, like, then I'm already not interested. And uh, – I'm just gonna keep playing. Like I love what I do. I love being involved with the sport. I want to continue to be involved and watch it grow. And so I'm in it for the long haul. I and some brands ask me that, like, how long are you gonna be in this before you jump on the next thing? And I'm like, I'm ride or die. I'm ride or die over here on pickleball. So uh, I think it's going up. It's gonna keep going up. And uh, yeah, I think if you want to reach that recreational side of things, then I'm one of the guys that can do that. No doubt about it. We're all riding or dying here, and I think we're riding pretty darn well. So, uh, folks, how about these three? Just bringing it. Just love it. Tyson, Caitlin, and Ernie. People at next year, be 500 people at 500 people at next year's Nationals Business Forum because we can see the opportunity. I think the players are going to hear about this and want to go. Wait a minute, I need to learn from from these business folks. So it's been a terrific day, a privilege to host this. You guys, thanks so much, and we'll see you next year. Thank you.